Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Wildermyth, Monarchs Under the Mountain. As today we start digging into Chapter 2. We've got a fair bit of new territory to explore, not to mention a new incursion, just a few months out. So uh, we've definitely got our hands full, but with any luck we should be able to carve out maybe about half these territories by the end of the episode. Though it really does depend on exactly which events we end up triggering. That said, uh, first things first. Obviously we need to secure these two tiles, create a buffer between the explored and unexplored territory. Let's dive in, see what happens. Elisetton Garden. Kermor Threshery. For their own. The Thresheries provided work and food to us wood folk for six generations at least. It's up this way. See how the wheel ruts run deep? I'll stand by you. My spear's solid. Your breath? That lady saying something to you? She wants to fight next to us. Help wouldn't be bad, would it? I'm what they call hill hardy. Tough. And you know, my husband, Gramlin, breads our table. Down this path, I'm hack away the spider thorn. By evening, let's bring a good man some good news. Tall trees nod and sway in a stirring breeze. A lightning night. Sure, why not? Looks like she's just a temporary tag-along, so it certainly couldn't hurt. Unless she dies, but we'll try to avoid that. If I do die, one of you has to marry my husband. Oh? Uh, right. But, um, say your name? Naya. Naya Qualenbur. Hey, we're coming. You breath? We pick up a wild woman? Is Aaron close behind you? And random? This is Naya. Nolan went and said she could come along. I'm on the fence. If other people think... I'm Naya Qualenbur. No one's a better gardener. That's not a cautious woman's face. So together they go. To a beckoning battle. Alright, Naya. Let's show these naysayers what for. Also, your breath's up a level. And as tempting as it is to go for naturalist again, we've already got one, so... I guess we'll go Elementalist. Pretty standard mix here, nothing to really worry about. Okay, well, the Mushrocks right on our flank might be slightly concerning. But we can deal with that. Especially with the mighty Naya Qualenbur on our side. All right, first things first, we want our damage-boosting aura up front. Though if we can get a stun, that'll make this a whole lot easier. And would you look at that, right out the gate with a stun, fantastic. Just shocking. Yeah, I know, that's a pretty old pun, but what can I say? It's just hard to say current with the latest wordplay. So the rest of these guys are way out there. We'll just prep for incoming, try to get closer to the mush rocks, finish it off next round.
And here they come. But we've still got plenty of room to work. Let's finish the mush rocks. Naya. She's helping. Miracle bits. And down it goes. Now for the chosen. That'll stop the chosen from actually reaching us. Oh, snap. Well... That, uh, that did not play out at all how I expected it to. But no harm done, I suppose. Chosen's out. Let's trim the Woken. Aaron's untouchable. That should soak the Slinger's attack. Ah, close. Slinger's dead in two rounds. And we're pretty much done. Let's knock out the small fries. Crackathoom! Not sure if we actually get XP for DOT kills. Ah, and... It looks like Random's Igokora will claim him at the end of Chapter 2. So glad to have had you, buddy. The Threshing House, the Ard, it's all a broken disaster. Seasons will come to heal it. Seasons and stubborn people. Yeah, hey, pretty good. You handle a spear all right. She was fine. Don't have to cup her cheeks, pat her head, do you? I should be home for dinner. The hike proves long. Night will reach them before they reach the door. Naya's chilled expression gradually warms, but her eyes tend lower. Here, down where the spider thorn's been kept at bay. See? 
Amid dark trees, the wood house glows. Inside is a happy hall. Now that threshery, our whole forest, once again will walk freely and safely and warm. We fought, myself included. I fought and won. A fragrant jar of lavender is open on a shelf, and the stove breathes warm, woody air. And oh, I only wish you'd seen it. Zephyr quick, I ran one through. Swisher swift, I pierced another. Hmm, Naya was brave. Be proud of your wife. All she thought of was you. A humble feast happens there, and a trading of life tales. That night, your breath's best stories find their mark. So night takes its time to dwindle. Bits of the meal are picked over, dregs and cups are drained. And in the quiet that comes over them, Gramland, Naya's husband, clears his throat. Um, I hope I'm okay saying this. I'm going to say it. It's all a lot of... I understand what you do, all of you. It's a sacrifice you make that I, I don't think... Probably no one ever fully repays, right? I know that it it's selfish, and I'm proud of you, Naya, my hero wife. I am thankful, and I know that you deserve whatever chance you want. But I'm not sure if I can, um... Bramland? I'm not joining them. You're not? No, beautiful one. I wanted to say, let's give him my granddad's old weapon. You're... but that's... I'm not using that thing. I'm a married woman. I'll... I'll fetch it down. The gift Naya and Gramland will give them is a rare piece with a history of its own. Ah, Naya. My Naya. Summer will come, and life in this forested place will once more turn towards happiness. And look at that! An artifact staff for our brand new mystic. Fantastic! Which grants an extra discus bounce. Nice. The Winterfur Staff. They say that when a sage goes to the mountains, they either die or become feral and hide. Staffs like this are heirlooms for those people who braved rock and element to tangle their hair amongst the steepest, strangest stones. And of course, the special effect for stone weapons is area stun and shred on crit which is pretty fantastic for casters, because that extends to all of their spells. I thought we had an artifact on Bunny, too. But I must be thinking of that tree staff that I gave Rhett. In retrospect, I probably should have given that to Bunny. I mean, she is a naturalist, but I must have had a reason at the time. That was a while ago. That said, uh... Your breath will definitely benefit from it more, because she is literally carrying a stick right now. We'll toss that to her, and hopefully we'll find something nice for Bunny further down the road. We've also got Double Woken. Certainly nothing we can't handle at this point. I may have actually been a little overzealous in blocking their upgrades in Chapter 1, because I do feel like we've uh, we've outpaced them a fair bit at this point. Though, we've still got three and a half chapters to go, so I really shouldn't get ahead of myself. Sunseater Cloak, yet another new accessory design. Plus stunt, so that goes right to Nolan. I'm really liking these new designs.
Let's get defenses up. And on to the next tile. 47 days. This is going to be tight. Yvrath and Random are rivals. Really? The guy who saved your life? Okay. Flower Timber. Old Jasper Mill. The Strider. Has anybody seen any of those cow skulls or weird rock stacks yet? This fog is so thick I can barely see anything. We'll probably hear Deepest before we see them at this rate. Maybe. Oh. That's an awful pretty patch of flowers to be in a gloomy place like this. Funny shape they're in, now that you mention it. That's a footprint. It's not just me, right? That's a giant flowering footprint? This rings a bell. I remember a drawing of this very clearly. But the context is... Give me a minute. Womb. Womb. What was that? There's something moving through the forest. Something huge. We've had this encounter before, right? Like, actually, I think we might have had it in both previous seasons. The, um... The Woodland Strider, the one that drops the pine cone, like the little pine cone baby. Or is this something different? Boom. Caw, caw. Hang on. We're near old Jasper Mill, right? Oh, no. The Strider of old Jasper Mill. What? A giant of terrible beauty, dooming those who look upon it. And you're just remembering this now. Did you say doom? Oh, wait, no, I know what this one is. Oh, Ah, shoot, but Aaron's really not the one I would have hoped to get this on. Um, yeah, you know what? What the heck? Well, now I've got to know what this thing is. Are you sure we should go chasing after whatever was huge enough to make that print? We're not afraid of stompy things and mist. Come on. Stomping and mist are fine. It's more the doom part. This would be easier if I could see more than ten feet in front of my face. Woom. Rawr. Rustle, rustle. The Strider. The deepest. Oof. Come to me, brave one. Greek. Womb. They're close. Get ready. What's on your face? Doom. The doom that came to Yefefold. Getting slightly tougher on these enemy loadouts, too. So, Aaron is now leaf marked. Which by itself doesn't do much, that's just a flat plus 10 to recovery rate, faster healing. 
It actually, uh, it actually looks halfway decent on him. Not bad. I was worried it might look a bit too goofy. Not really planning on doing anything with that one, but uh, it is nice to get the passive. Plus, now we've got a backup in case his limbs start coming off. In which case, you know, an alarming number of new ones will grow back in their place. Hug cover. Ooh, yeah, that'll do. Right, I keep forgetting those things have some hefty warding. Prep for approach. I'm guessing it'll come charging through the door at us. Bonk. Huh. I guess the path was just too narrow. Hmm. Well, that certainly works out nicely for us. Slinger's blocking LOS. Not anymore, he's not. Oh, right, I should have moved Nolan up first. One more tap should do it. And hold. A couple of Woken. And a Horn Child. That was actually kind of adorable. Let's take him out. Let's get this guy flanked first. Lovely. Horn child's out. Aaron's untouchable. Everyone else files up behind him. Hi there. Nice. Very nice. And there's our last batch. One Mushrox, one Chosen. Slightly heavier hitters, but nothing to worry about.
Shoot. I really should have converged on the doorway before we cracked it. It's fine, though. We've got this. Honestly, I'm not even sure they can get out the doorway, so I guess we'll see. And now we'll never know, because his feet are full of arrows. Chosen's out. Aaron's untouchable. With much rock soon to follow. With uh, being out, that is. Not untouchable. Look at that! Some actual mage robes for Yvrep. The game is uh, rarely this accommodating to a new arrival. We also pulled a Wolfheart Strap, plus health. Which I guess will also go to Yvrep. And the healers are in. I guess it was inevitable. Couldn't block them forever. Better them than the Merc Mothers, at least. Speaking of whom... Uh, yeah, yeah, we will block the Merc Mother. I mean, again, they'll obviously make it in eventually, but... Hopefully that'll at least give us enough time to shore up our warding. The Prisoner. Aaron and Random went in search of an exile. Oh, I know which one this is. This... This is an interesting one. Aaron never told anyone. In fact, he often wondered whether it had truly happened at all. A death curse had been laid on his head as a boy. The words of some weird witch whose wrath had been stirred. A vulture voice shrieked in Aaron's sleep, visiting often on nights of a shadowed moon. Many years went by. As falls piled up, Aaron began to feel a clutching hand at his heart. And at last, he confided in someone. He chose a friend, a man with whom he'd fought battles and beaten dire odds. Like normal odds, but dire. Cottage is just up this way. Don't hesitate to say anything if you're worn down. Hmm. I don't think it's hitting me that way. Yet. They travel to the whispered home of an exile, an old mystic reputed to have studied curses and their counters. I do wonder... Hmm? I wonder about the word exile. Exiled from where? And for what? There's answers to those questions, I'm sure. I'm not sure they're knowable. Exiles are often just people who made too much sense, too publicly. What's this lady called? Uh, Derry was the name I heard. Derry Show. Trees? Is it the wakeful trees again, all mumbling and moth-peppered? 
from the far side of the cottage, her creaky voice bleats. Is it the trees or the breeze between them, or the hare or the proud owl, muttering to mock my ears on this most markless night? Whatever you be, Lostlings or Doggins or even a man of bones, if you creep hankering to my cottage door, be warned. I'm no morsel for a tooth, nor treasure for a... Uh, it's none of those things. It's just us. Which ones are us? Then her lantern light finds their faces. Oh. And a laugh spills from her. A burbly, wet, warm laugh. Oh, oh, is it too couth, travelers? Ho, oh, oh, ho, Come inside. It's late, but my stove's going. There's pig feet pickled nine years. Chicken I'll chap and simmer. They tell this exiled mystic about Aaron's curse, as chicken cooks in a bluish bath. Curses, hexes, are really extensions of nature, agents of a wild will. Like beasts, like fire, eating, breathing, destroying. Once a curse is spun into motion, it follows the course of chaos. The trick then is to trap it, to lure it out of the life it circles, and bind it within new bounds. Sure, I know how to do this, but the cost is always steep. That's unsurprising. What'll it take? If you are set on it, then there's somewhere you must go. And you may not well enjoy it, what you find there. But you are to retrieve something. A stone. A stone that was buried in a cave well hidden. There are few objects of power in this world fit to be a home, a prison for a curse. The Dwemerald Stone, green and bright. Hope that I am the only one who knows its location. Yep. And so they leave on a quest of curse-breaking as dawn crests the hilltops. No way we're skipping this one. This, uh, this is the event that actually unlocks the secret campaign. And there's our incursion, which is actually split into two separate three-star incursions. Both of which will burn out on our buffer tiles. Fantastic. Though that is dependent on us getting defenses up on old Jasper Mill. Where Derry Ink their map, an unremarkable tunnel mouth opens. I'm not set on going through with this. I'm getting... A weird feeling, aren't you? Don't feel guilty. I practically had to drag you here, didn't I? Water rubbed this cave into the soft parts of the planet. There's a good, cool air. A strange, ancient smell. I wonder if you feel it. Being cursed. I wonder if it's something that the body... feels. Shouldn't you be? Who knows? No, I mean, I, I wonder if, when it's gone, I'll realize how affected my life's been. Do you want to have that discussion? Right now? Oh, never mind. Keep moving. Down through the dimming narrows of the cave, they stoop. Until Random pulls up. Half-broken wall here. Made by people. There, they squeeze sidelong between decaying stonework. Whoops. There's no door, meaning it wasn't meant to be opened. That's normal. Or, or I, I don't know. I get why you'd do it, if you were hiding a horde. 
Ambient light seeps from mineral veins in the next chamber. How old is it, though? This mortar comes away like cake paste. A venerated place is what it was. She said it was buried. I didn't think she meant buried. It reads, Everlasting rest now cradles our bright hero, Aria Anastalis. Who tore our world from the talons of a hungry evil. And gave her life to free us from tyranny. So this jewel we're meant to find. It has to be. Nestled in with her bones? And, you know, under normal circumstances, a man of integrity like Aaron would walk away, but... But I'm going to have to meta this one, because I don't know if this event will trigger again. And it is the only way to unlock the sixth campaign. Which I would like to play at some point. Though we've got two other campaigns to get to before that one. Come on, we can dig careful. The pair of them dig in the hard earth at the statue's feet. The cave clouds up, their foreheads steam and they don't speak. Chop and scuff of shovels, echoes, grunts, and heavy breaths. Ugh. Deeper and deeper, the hole widening. The soil rich-smelling, smoky and sharp. Tuh. And then... Crack. Crack. Crash. In the earth where they dug, a green jewel, netted and strung. Not like anyone's treasure, but like a tool to drape from the belt. A green stone of forgiveness was the gift that mended the kinwar of Hollow Lake. Look inside upon that feathered light, soaring and unsteady, glancing like sun on swords, over hills forgotten, Fates foregone. You got some poetry in you, suddenly? I... I don't remember where it's even from. They exit the way they came in, leaving only dust and a defaced monument. And, but... See, yeah. The only thing is... Random... Hmm? What do you figure this means? Oh, this? What does this mean, you're asking? With a soundless shout, the ghost streams forward. Spectral hero. The apparition glides through the air, wrathful and soundless swinging a ghostly weapon that connects solidly enough. Yeah, I don't really feel great about this one, but, you know, you do what you've got to for the story. Let's lock her down. Spectre pen. Let's do some trimming. Oh, shoot. No, that's where Aaron was supposed to go. That's fine. We'll get her next round. 
Or we will do that. That works too. The spirit turns to smoke, then to nothing. Random and Aaron don't pause long. They embark again for the cottage of the exile. Despite favorable weather, their campfires are louder than their conversations. The cabbage is good. Yeah. Familiar smells, the wild fennel and black bell, tell them they returned. The trees are birdless by day, as they were by evening. See? We're at the end. Are we? Wish I had a better feeling about it. I want to say, though, thanks. Sincerely. I don't know where I would have gone, what I would have tried, if you hadn't, kind of, taken the lead. So quick! So quick indeed, as if you flew on wings of fire! Hmm? I was just standing back there. What? Found the old stone dairy, where you said it would be. And a tomb is where it was. Guarded by a ghost. In a... No, I I'm sorry. I was sure it was just an ill-famed spot. But you retrieved it anyway. You must be so brave. And so desperate. Yeah, well, I'm also wondering. After touching it. This stone, it feels full. I don't know what it might be full with. Maybe you do? You need wakeful things to keep a curse in. Ancient things from an age when the world was less still. They weren't born in the earth. They were crafted. Elden mystics and the gods of deep and glade are who made the Dwemerald, the Malishir, the Meldstone, and the Moonwheelin. Should we understand all that, Aaron? You learn this all somewhere? It's... When I was young, I lusted for these stones. They were the only thing, it seemed, that could be kept from me. Kept from you? Hmm? Well, no, I only mean I'm a hermit scholar, you see. Of course I would want them. For study, but <laughs> clearly they're quite rare. The cottage air seems somehow colder than the outside. As cold as the night they came here first. Anyway, exile has taught me the peril in petty wants. I no longer wish to hold one. I wish for nothing to be held. Nor any bird be caged. All her articles appear unmoved. Even the dust has kept its place. It's as if this woman was simply sitting, waiting for their return. You know what I mean, Aaron. Your life is held in bondage by a curse you never earned. Now that I think on it, that should precede lunch. I must honor the urgency that moved you. Putting it off would be pointless, I guess. Second thoughts at all? That'd be a mess if I stopped you. After all, I kind of made you do. Hmm. I'll bring the stone out now. Indeed. Derry livens a crowd of candles. Holding it again, Aaron can't help but be unnerved by the light inside the Dwemerald. Yes, it looks just the same. Glowing lowly, pulsing with the suggestion of sound. He feels it through his bones, beating the thrum of vast wings. Derry tugs it from Aaron's half-offered hand. 
What we attempt today is not a dangerous thing. You may watch, Random, but don't interfere. Swoop. Casting a curse is easier than removing one. The larger share of the risk is mine, if that comforts you. Now I must fuse with the jewel, and with you, Aaron. My power is ungrade, but I believe it should suffice. Allow me to reach out to you. A fog bank hangs in front of Aaron's future, and he's being asked to leap past it. But this is why they came to the house of an exile, Derry Show. Someone who has plumbed places no one else goes. The light will change. And it does. The window stays open, but the day is doused within the cottage walls. Derry's face goes blank. I must tell you to lower your defenses. It won't feel natural, big, strong, knightly creature like you. But surrender. I'm trying to. You're starting to. It's okay. It's enough. Interfusion is achieved. First drawn as inky lines between them, then color seeping in. A joining wall filled and formed with nothing but the mulling force of their minds. Aaron and the woman Derry are connected. Next, the stone is sought and bound to them. In the cottage, to random, there's only silence. The ghosts of light and the expressions on these faces in front of him. But to Aaron, there appears the nauseating specter. Of a thing even books forgot. Something that has been trapped inside this stone. Since charred times. He wants to withdraw somehow, or shout, but finds even the notion brushed away, as if by Derry's hands. Suddenly, long-seeming hands, and sharp of nail. Aaron, Aaron, this doesn't... look. A shadow presence exits his body. Aaron can feel it, leaving his heart clear. There's a smell of fresh blood. For a moment, pain contorts Derry's face, and wild colors swirl under her skin. But the shadow goes quickly into the jewel, takes the place of whatever was once there, contained. Stop, uh... Aaron, stop, are you saying? Hey, stop! Derry? Oh? Yes, of course. We are finished. It all ends very suddenly, the dark, the quiet. Random manages to catch a slumping back Aaron. Puh. Gotcha. I'm really... myself? Again? And oh, my prison! She lets the jewel tumble, crushes it with one swift, happy stomp. Crunch. Shatters like a worm pecker's precious little egg. Aaron regains his feet. You. You're not. You're a. But what hap? The house explodes. Whoom. Derry stands tall as wreckage reigns. Ah, delicious morons, flagrant fools. Remember this moment. Savor it. <coughs> Ah! Uh, clonk, clatter. Derry, what... what did you just do? Oh, how the growly man growls. The tragic and tart-eyed and trickable thing. It's wonderful news. You need no more call me Derry Show. I will never need to wear so coarse a name again. Call me Volta, for I am she. I am the Vulture Queen herself. My powers come home at last. 
Oh, but you were so easily fooled. I might even believe you had desired this. Does the spirit of my servant reside in you? No, for I would have certainly felt it, I'd say, when you were young. Yours is the voice. But how pleasing you will finally understand. How many times on a night of no moon had Aaron woken with a murmur in his ear? The whispering of an absent woman's lips. The whisper would rise in pitch as it went away, receding as if on wings. Yours is the voice I've heard all my life. Yes, I am your curse, mother. And how special you are to me, child. Absurd little rabbit who's fulfilled all my dreams. Aaron? Hmm. If you think your talons can tickle me, think again. But you've worked hard on my behalf. I'd rather reward you than rip your veins up. So, in that spirit... They struggle towards her, faltering on house rubble. Woof. But like a feather in the smoke, the woman vanishes. In a barren tap room, later along the road home. At least the curse seems gone. It does. Hmm. Seems like it would be gone. I'm sure it's... We'll find a way to undo whatever we did. Time and its mountains tend to pull meeting paths apart, down distances that never more may cross. Random and Aaron won't lay eyes on that vulture-voiced woman again. Not in this story. Unlocked Legacy Campaign. The Sun Swallower's Wake. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, it's a bit wordy, but I like that event. I've only had it once before, since I haven't had a lot of time to play Wildermyth these days, and this is a relatively new event. I think it's one they just added last year. Which, of course, is also, as aforementioned, the only way to unlock that new sixth campaign, or relatively new, in the grand scheme of things. We also pull the usual level up, which... Gosh, um, I guess we'll put that into Endurance. Not the most exciting bonus, but we can always use more defense. And with that, I feel like we're at a good place to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now, but we will pick up here next time as we make sure those incursions don't get to Lefeffold, and then carve a path there ourselves to pick up our sixth. Though, uh, given circumstances, our 6th will pretty quickly end up ascending to the A-Squad, so, you know. Good for them, bad for random. Such is life. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Revenant, Aloise, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleib, James Tremay, Mark Giemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hoppenskip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.